When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain. When the hurly burly's done. When the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heave. There to meet with the bat. There is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filth the air. What bloody man is that? Father, this is Lennox, who like a good and hearty soldier fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the boil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel for to that. The multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him. In the western isles of Kearns and Gallo glasses is supplied, and fortune, <coughs> on its damned quarrel smiling, showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak for brave Macbeth, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution, like Valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave. <coughs> Which neer shook hands, nor bade farewell to him, till he unseamed him from the nave to the chaps, and fixed his head upon our battlements. Valiant cousin, worthy gentleman. As whence the sun begins his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders break. So from that spring, whence comfort seemed to come, discomfort swells. Mark, king of Scotland, mark. No sooner justice had with valor armed, Compelled these skipping kerns to trust their heels. But the Norwayan lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Dismayed not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? Yes, as sparrows eagles, or the hare the lion. As cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. <coughs> but I'm faint, my gashes cry for help. So all well thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go get him, surgeons. Who comes here? The worthy thane of Ross. God save the king. Whence camest thou, worthy thane? From Fife, great king. Where the Norwayan banners flout the sky and fan our people gold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict, till the Bellana's bridge room, wrapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness. No more that Thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. Where hast thou been, sister? Killing swine. A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. What are these, so withered and so wild in their attire, they look not like the inhabitants of the earth yet are aunt? Live you? Or are you not that man may question? You seem to understand me. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glorms. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee. Of All hail Macbeth, thou shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are you fantastical or indeed that which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and of great prediction of noble having and of royal hope. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favor nor your hate. 
Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. By Sinnoh's death I know I'm Thane of Gloms. But how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives. A prosperous gentleman, and to be king? Stands not within the prospect of belief. No more than to be Cawdor. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence. Or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? Speak, I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. What seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind. Would they had stayed? Are such things here as we do speak about, or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. <laughs> and Thane of Cawdor too. Went it not so? To the self same tune in words. Who's here? The king hath happily received Macbeth, the news of thy success. And when he reads thy personal venture in the rebels' fight, his wonders and his praises do contend which should be thine or his. Silenced with that, and viewing over the rest of the self same day, he finds thee in the stout and way in ranks, nothing afeard of what thyself didst make, strange images of death. I am sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, for an earnest of a greater honor he bade me from him to call thee Thane of Cawdor, in which addition, hail most worthy Thane, for it is thine. The Thane of Cotter lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lies yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. His treason's capital confessed and proved to have overthrown him. Lons and Thane of Cawdor? Greatest is behind. Do you not hope your children shall be kings? And those that gave the Thane of Cawdor to me promise no less to them. That trusted home might yet enkindle you under the crown, besides the Thane of Cawdor, but... Tis strange. And oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. Not be ill, cannot be good, if ill, I have it given me earnest of success, commencing in the truth. I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield that suggestion whose hard image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock in my ribs? Against the use of nature, my thought whose murder yet is but fantastical shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise and nothing is but what is not. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir? Worthy Macbeth, we stay at your leisure. Is execution done on Cawdor? My liege, I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardons, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one that had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed, as t'were a careless trifle. There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I felt absolute trust. A worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Thou art so far before that the swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. What thou hast left deserved, that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state children and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe toward your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee, and will labor to make thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, that hath no less deserved, nor must be known no less than have done so. Let me enfold thee and hold thee close to my heart. There if I grow. The harvest is your own. My plenteous joys wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, 
No, we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name here after the Prince of Cumberland, which honor must not accompany to invest him only, but signs of nobleness, like stars, shall shine on all deservers. From hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. I'll be myself the harbinger, and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Caldor. The Prince of Cumberland? That is a step on which I must fall down or else overleap it. For in my way it lies. Stars hide your fires, let God's light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the end. Yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air, into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king, who all hailed me, Thane of Cardor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me, and referred to me coming on of time with hail king that shalt be. This I have thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou must not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Come as thou art, and cowdor, and shalt be what thou art promise. Yet I do fear thy nature. It is too full of milk or human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst to be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, thou wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, yet wouldst wrongly win. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirit in thine ear, and chastise the valour of my tongue, all that impends thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have crowned with all. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. That matter say it, is not thy master with him? Who, word so, would have informed for preparations? So please you, it is true. Her thane is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than to make up this message. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse, that croaks the fatal entrance of Dukan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe top, full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood and stoop up the axis and passage to remorse, that no compunctuation, visitings of nature, shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my women's breast and take my milk for God, you murdering ministers. Whenever in your slightest substance you wait on nature's mischief. Come, flick knight, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor have him peep through the blanket of the dark, to cry, hold, hold. Great Clamus, worthy Cowdor, greater than both, by all hail hereafter, Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present. I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall the sun that morrow see. Your face, my thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and shall put the knight's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solemnly sovereign sway and masterdom. 
We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. This bird hath made his pendant bed and procreant cradle, where they most breed and haunt, I have observed. The air is delicate. See, see, our honored hostess. The love that follows us sometime is our trouble, which still we think is love. Here and I teach you how you shall bid God ill us from your pains, and thank us for your trouble. Where's Godor? We coursed him at the heels, and had a purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well, and his great love, sharp as his spur, hath helped him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Conduct me to mine host, we love him highly, and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. If it were done when tis done, and to our well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with surcease success, but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here. But here, upon this bank, in shoal of time, I'll jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here. We but teach bloody instructions, which being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host, who should against his murder shut the door, not bear the knife myself? Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet tongued, against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity like a naked newborn babe. Striding the blast, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye. The tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition. How now? What news? He has almost stopped. Why have he left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself, as it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou afraid to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteem the ornament of life? and live a coward in thy own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat I the adore. Prithee peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless guns, and dashed the brains out, and I had so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? We fail, but screw your courage to the sticking place, and we will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two jaberlings, with, will I, with wine and vessel so convinced that memory, the warden of the brain, shall be a fume, that cannot you, I, perform the unguarded Duncan. Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber, and use their very daggers that they have done it? 
who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and climb our war upon his death. <sighs> I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fair show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? The moon has come down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take this later, sir. Hold. I take my sword. A heavy summons lays like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way into repose. Give me my sword. Who's there? Friend. <laughs> what, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's abed. He hath been an unusual pleasure lately, and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This diamond he greets her wife with all by the name of most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will become the servanted effect, which else should free have wrought. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you, they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet, uh, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some time words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kind's leisure. If you shall cleave to my consent, when tis it shall make honor for you. So I lose none. And seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchise and allegiance clear, I shall be counseled. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Is this a tiger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Hum. Let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not a fatal vision? Sensible to feeling as to sight? Art thou but a dagger of the mind? Oh, false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain. As with all the rest, I see thee still. And on thy blade and dodging gouts of blood. Just not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. As I threat he lives. Words to the heat of deeds, too cold breath kids. I go, and it is done. Mel invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which have made them drunk hath made me bold, and that have quenched them hath given me fire. Hark, peace! The doors are open, and the sovereign groups do mark their charge with snores. I have drunk their posets, that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? Alack, I'm afraid they have awoken. Tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark, I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Hath he not resembled my father as he slept? I had done it. I've done the deed. I saw not hear a noise. I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? This is a sorry sight. Foolish thought to say a sorry sight. This one did laugh and sleep. And one did cry murder. But they did wake each other. 
They stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they see me with these hangmen's hands. Listen to their fear, I could not say amen when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. Wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing, and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. I thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep, innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the ravel sleeve of care, the death of each day's light, sore labor's bath, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? It cried, sleep no more. Gloms have murdered sleep, and therefore Cotter shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy Thane, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brassingly of things. Go get some water, and wash these filthy witnesses from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them, and smear their sleepy grooms with blood. Go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose, give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. What is that knocking? How is it with me, with every noise appalls me? What hands are here? out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No. This my hand will rather the multitudinous seas and carnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking. At the south entry, retire we to our chambers. A little water will clear us of this deed. How easy it is, then. Your constancy hath left you unattended. Hark, more knocking. Get on your nightgown. Let the occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed? Do I best not know myself? Wake Duncan with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. We were carousing around until the second cock. And drink, sir. Drink is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir. Nose painting, sleep, and urine. And lechery, sir. It provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but takes away the performance. I did, the very, I had the very throat on me. So, uh, one second. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thing? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. Labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Goes the king hence today? He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. Now we lay 
our chimneys were blown down. Twas a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Oh, horror. Har, har. Tongue nor heart can conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Most sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple and stole the life of the building. What is it you say? The life? Mean you his majesty. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See in and speak yourselves. Awake, awake. Ring the alarm bell. Murder and treason. What's the business that such hideous trumpets call to parley the sleepers of the house? Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Oh, Banquo. Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Whoa, at last. What, in our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear death, I prithee contradict thyself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality. Was with toys, renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere less is left this vault to brag of. What is amiss? You are. And do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountains of your blood is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were embadged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury, that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition of my violent love outrun the pause of reason. There the murderers stepped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make love known? Help me, hence, ho! Oh. Look to the lady. Let's briefly put on manly readiness, and meet I the hall together. How goes the world, sir, now? Why? See you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth has slain. Alas, the day. What good could they pretend? They were stubborn. The king's two sons were stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still. Thriftless ambitions that wilt raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Here to call me kill. The sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Are you just going? No, cousin, not to Fife. Well, I thither. May you see things well done there. Adieu. Let our old robes sit easier than our new.
the last one now. King, Cawdor, Gloms, all. As the weird woman promised, and I fear thou place most valley for it. Yet, it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, why by the verities on thee made good may they not be my oracles as well and bid me up in hope? Hush. No more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, he had been as a gape in our great feast, an all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me. For which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. Ride you this afternoon? Aye, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice, which still hath been grave and prosperous in this day's council. But we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time twixt this and supper. Go not my horse the better, I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel patricide, filling their ears with strange inventions. But of that tomorrow, when there withal we shall have cause of state, craving us jointly. Hie you to horse, adieu, till you return at night. Goes Fleance with you? Aye, my good lord. Our time does call upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot. And so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time, till seven at night to make society the sweeter welcome. We will keep ourselves till supper time alone. While then, God be with you. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus, our fears in Banco stick deep, and his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to an act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filled my mind. For them the gracious Duncan have I murdered. Put rancors in the vessel of my peace, only for them to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings. Who's there? <sighs> was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. Well then now, have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he in time passes which held you so under fortune. Thus did Banquo. He made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you in the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my liege. I in the catalogue ye go for men. Now, if you have a station in the file, none of the worst rank of manhood, say it. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be ridden on't. 
both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life. And thought I could, with a barefaced power, sweep him from my sight, and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall, who I myself struck down, and thence it is, that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye, for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us, though our lives- Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour, at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on it, or it must be done tonight, to leave no rubs nor botches in the work, plant his son that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. We are resolved, my lord. We are both resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. Nots had all spen, where our desire is got without content, to safer to be which we destroy, than by destruction dwell in deathful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone of sorrows, fancies, your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them, they think on? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. But let the frame of things disjoint. Both the worlds suffer. Here, we will eat our meal in fear, and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead, whom we to gain our peace have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done its worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic, foreign levy, nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle, my lord, sleek are your rugged looks, be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. I'm full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his flayance lives. But in them nature's copies not a tune. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jokened. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come seeing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody invisible hand Cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Thou marvelest at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee, go with me. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day. Now spurs the latest traveler apace to gain the timely inn and near approaches the subject of our watch. Then tis he, the rest that are within the note of expectation are already in the court. His horses go about, almost a mile, but he does usually, so all men do, from hence to the palace gate, make it their walk. A light, a light! Tis he! Stand to it! It will be rain tonight. Let it come down. 
There's but one down. The sun has fled. degrees. Sit down at first and last the hearty welcome. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best times we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks, they are all welcome. It's blood on my face. Tis Banquo's then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. Thou art the best of the cut throats. Yet he's good that did the like for flayons. If thou didst it, thou art the non peril. Most royal sir, flayons is escaped. <sighs> then comes my fit again. I else been perfect. Whole as the marble. Founded as the rock, as broad in general as the air, But now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound to saucy doubts and fears. The bank was safe? Safe in a ditch he rides, with twenty trenched gashes on his head, least to death to nature. Well, thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. To wait remembrance, sir. Now good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. Here had we our country's honor roofed. Were the grace person of our Banquo present, who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance? <laughs> His absence, sir, leaves little upon his promise. Please, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. Which of you have done this? What is it that moves your highness? You can't not say I did it! Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise. His Highness is not well. Sit! My worthy friends, my lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought, you'll again be well. You note him. You shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I am a bold one, that dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, these flaws and starts, impostors to true fear, would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. If I stand, I, I saw him. Blood hath been shed ere now. I have the olden time. Your human statue purged the gentle wheel. I, and since two, murders have been performed. Too terrible for the ear. The times have been that when the brains were out, the men would die, and there an end. But now they rise again. Twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. Avant and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. You have displaced the mirth. I pray you, speak not. He grows worse and worse. Questions enrage him. At once, good night. Good night, and better health attend his majesty. 
A good night to all. It will have blood. I say blood will have blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person in our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it, by the way, but I will send. I will tomorrow to the weird sisters. Nor shall they speak. For now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good all causes shall give way. My own blood stepped in so far, that should I wade no more? Returning were as tedious as go on. Strange things I have in head, that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the seasons of all natures. Sleep. Come. Close to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Thrice the blinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harpier cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go, and the poison entrails throw. Toad, that under cold stone, days and nights as thirty-one. Sweltered venom, sleeping gaunt, boiled at first by the shocked pot. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake in the cauldron boil the fake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. Outer fork and lineworm sting. Lizard, Lizard leg and, and owlet's wing. From children of powerful trouble, like a hill will boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, which is mummy, mod hoof. Finger of birth strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drabe. Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm's firm and good. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. By the pricking of, of my thumb, thumb something, something wicked, wicked this way comes. How oh, now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. How are you come to know it? Answer me! Macbeth, Macbeth. Macbeth! Beware, Macduff. Beware the thane of five. Dismiss me. Enough. Water thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear, all right. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure. Take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. Be lie and meddle, frown, and take no care. Who chafes, who frets, or where conspirers are, Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. That will never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree, unfix his earthbound root? Sweet bondments! Good! Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Burnham rise. And our high-placed Macbeth shall le live the lease of nature, pay his breath to time and mortal custom. And my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this. 
and an eternal curse fall on you. Power too, like the spirit of Banquo. Down! Thy crown does scar mine eyeballs, and thy hair, thy rather gold-bound brow, is like the first. A third is like the former. Filthy hags! Why do you show me this? A fourth? Start eyes! What will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet! A seventh! I'll see no more! And yet the eighth appears, who bears a glass which shows me many more. And some I see that twofold balls and triple scepters carry. Horrible sight! And now I see tis true, for the blood baltered. Bankle smiles upon me and points at them for his. Gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I occurred in the calendar. Come in without there. <sighs> Steward three, my lord, to bring the word that Goth is fled to England. Fled to England? I'm a good lord. Time thou anticipatest my dread exploits. The flighty purpose never is overtook unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very fristlings of my heart shall be the fristlings of my hand. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had done none. His flight was madness, which our actions do not, our fears make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his title in a place from whence he does himself does fly. He loves us not. He wants the natural touch, for the poor wren, the most dimitive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear, and nothing is the love, as little is the wisdom where flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cuz, I pray you school yourself, but for your husband he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves, when we hold rumor from what we fear, yet we know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. Ah, but it is, that he's farther less. I am so much a fool, should I stay longer. It will be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. So, yeah. Your father is dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What? With worms and flies? With what I get, I mean. And so do they. Poor bird. Wouldst thou never fear the net nor lime, the pitfall nor the gin? Why should I, mother? Poor birds they are not set for. My father is not dead, for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy and to sell again. Thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet I faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools, for there are liars and swearers and out to beat. The honest men and hang up them. Now, God help thee, poor monkey. What, how? But how wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If you would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Poor prattler, how thou talkst. What are these faces? I have done no harm. But I remember now, I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometimes accounted dangerous folly. 
Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say that I've done no harm? Where is your husband? I hope in a no place so unsanctified with such as thou must find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest. <laughs> Let us seek out some desolate shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men, bestride our downfall and birthdom. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face, that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. My thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong knots of love without leave taking? Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp, in the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I speak not as an absolute fear of you. I think our country seeks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each day a new gash is added to her wounds. I think withal there will be hands uplifted in my right, and here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more suffer and more sundry ways than ever, by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It, it is myself, I mean, in whom I know are the particulars of vice so grafted that one that shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless harms. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none, in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust and my desire. All consonant impediments would overbear that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such a one to reign. We have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affections such a staunchless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their land, desire his jewels and this other's house, and my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. Scotland hath foisons to fill up your will, of your mere own. All these are portable, with other graces weighed. But I have none. The king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of every several crime, acting it in many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of the concord into hell. Uproar the universal peace, Confound all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland! Scotland! If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live. O oh, nation miserable with an untitled tyrant, bloody sceptred, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since that the truest of t issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accursed, 
and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father was a most sainted king. The queen that bore thee died every day she lived. Fare thee well. These evils thou repeatest upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. Macduff, this noble passion hath reconciled my thoughts to thy good and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over-credulous haste. But God above, deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction, and here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself, for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have covered what was my own, at no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed before thy here approach, old Seward, with ten thousand warlike men, already at a point, was setting forth. Now, will together, and the chance of goodness be like our unwarranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. See, who comes here? My countryman, but yet I know him not. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. Stand Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave, where nothing but who knows nothing is once seen to smile. Where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy, the dead man's knell is there scarce and ask for who. Good men's lives expire before the flowers in their caps, dying or ere they sicken. What's the newest grief? That of an hours ago doth he's the speaker. Each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? My well. And all my children? Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace? No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. But not a miser of your speech. How ghost? Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Bet their comfort. We are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good seward and ten thousand men, an older and better soldier, none that Christendom gives out. What I could answer for this with comfort, like, but I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. What concern they? The general cause? Or is it fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but it shares some woe, though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly let me have it. Let your ears not despise my tongue forever. Your castle is surprised, your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. My children, too? Wife, children, servants. Then I must be from thence. My wife killed, too? I have said. Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure the- He children. has no children. All my pretty ones? Did you say all? What all? My pretty chickens at their dam at one fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things that were so precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. Oh, I could play 
the woman with mine eyes and braggart with my tongue. But gentle heaven cut short all intermission, front to front. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. Within my sword's length set him. If he scape, heaven forgive him too. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in a most fast sleep. In this slumbery agitation, Besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You may to me, and tis most meet you should. Neither to you, nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. How came she by that light? Why, it has stood by her. She has light by her continually her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have I have known her to continue in this a quarter of an hour. Here's a spot. Out, damned spot. Out, I say. One, two, why? Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie. A soldier and a feared, what need we fear? Who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? The Thane of Thyth had a wife. Where is she now? What will these hands and near be clean? No more of that, my lord, no more of that. You mar with all this staring. Here's the smell of blood. It's still all the perfumes of Arabia cannot sweeten these little hands. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo is buried. He cannot come out of one's bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed, there's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Just give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, 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 my lord. Put on your nightgown. We we'll let the occasion call us to be watchers. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not, I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets. More needs she, the divine, than the physician. God, God, forgive us all. Look after her, remove from her the means of all annoyance, and still keep eyes upon her. Reports. Let them fly all till Burnham Wood remove to Dunsinane. I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The mind I sway and by the heart I bear shall never sock with doubt, doubt nor shake with fear. <sighs> Devil damn thee, black, thou cream faced loon. Where gots thou that goose look? There's ten thousand... East villain! Soldiers, sir. Go! Prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lily-livered boy! What soldier's patch? 
death of thy soul, those linen cheeks of thine are counsel to fear. What soldiers way faced? The English force so please you. This push will cheer me ever, or deceive me now. I've lived long enough, my way of life is fallen into the sear of the yellow leaf of that which should accompany old age. Is on her love, obedience, troops of friends. I must not look to have, but in their stead, curse is not loud, but deep. Mouth on her breath, which the poor heart would fain deny. I dare not. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. Tis not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send me out more horses, scur the country road. Fain thou that talk of fear. Give me my armor. How does your patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord as she's troubled with thick-coming fancies that keep her from rest. Cure of that! Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the mind a rooted sorrow? Raise out the written troubles of the brain? With some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon their heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. Throw physics to the dogs! I'll none of it! Come, put mine armor on. Give me my staff. My rhubarb sign or what purgative drug would scour these English hence? I will not be afraid of death and bane. To burn a wood forest come to Dunsinane. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bough and bear it before him. Thereby we shall shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery air and report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other but that the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunsinane and will endure our setting down before it. His main hope, for where there is an advantage to be given, both more and less have given the re him the revolt, and none serve him but the constrained things whose hearts are absent too. Let our just censures attend the true event, and put we on industrious soldiership. Hang out our banners on the outward walls. And still they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine the ague ate them up. And were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have met them dareful, beard to beard, and beat them backward home. I've almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. I have supped full with horrors. Direness, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, could not once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. Hereafter, there would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out! Out, brief candle! Why 
just put a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. I should report which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. I'll say, sir. As I stood watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, anon, methought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath, if it be not so. Within this three mile may you see it coming. I say a moving row. Thou speakest false. Upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive. Till famine cling thee. Thy speech be sooth. I care not if thou dost for me as much. Fear not. Till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane. And thou, a wood, comes toward Dunsinane. Gin to be a wary of the sun. And wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell! Blow wind! Come wreck! At least we'll die with hardness on our back! They have tied me to a stake. I cannot fly, but bear like I must fight the course. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one am I to fear, or none? What is thy name? Thou be afraid to hear it. No, though thou callst thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No nor more fearful. Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword, I'll prove the lie thou speakest. Thou wast woman-born. Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh to scorn. Brandish by man that's of woman-born. That way the noise is. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou best slain him with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. Let me find him, Fortune, and more I beg not. This way, my lord. The castle is gently rendered. The tyrant's people on both sides do fight. The noble thanes do bravely in the war. The day almost itself professors yours, and little is to do. Why should I play the Roman fool and die upon mine own sword? House, I see lives. The gashes do better upon them. Turn, hellhound, turn. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out. Thou losest labor. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable press. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. A curse be the tongue that tells me so. I'll not fight thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee as our rare monsters are painted on a pole, and under it, here you may see the tyrant. I will not yield. To kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, and to be baited with the rabble's curse? Who Burnham would become to Dunsinane, and then opposed, being of no woman born? Yet I will try the last. Before my body, I throw my warlike shield. Lay on, Macduff! I'm damned be him that first cries, hold enough!
I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Macduff is missing, and my noble son. Your son has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived but till he was a man. The witch no sooner had his prowess confirmed in the unshrinking station where he fought, but like a man he died. Then he is dead? Aye, and brought off the field. Your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Why then? God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I have hairs, I would not wish him to a fairer death, and so his knell is nulled. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. He's worth no more. You say he parted well, and he paid his score, and so God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Hail, King, for so thou art. Behold, where stands the Earth Serper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl. But speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planned newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as to sought by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone.